This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and exciting times. This is something new. This is the Alienware M15R5 Ryzen Edition. So Dell says that this is the first time they have put a Ryzen CPU and an NVIDIA GPU together in an Alienware since 2007. And you know, Ryzen is just the hotness this year for 2021. That is if you can get one though. Dell says that they're pretty optimistic about their supply chain. They are a big company, so they do have some cloud in buying. We're gonna look at it now. So obviously the design has changed here. The Alienware Legend design has another iteration. I'll leave it up to you as to whether you like this or the older design better. There's no more contrasting black butt like we had on the last several generations. So all the same color for the chassis. And by the way, this is available only in dark side of the moon with the latest version of their anti-stain in clear, endurance clear coat, they call it, but it's a dark gray. So I, I don't worry too much about it showing stains. So it's pretty monochromatic looking. The, there is a darker strip on the side. I know in some of the pictures that they show on the, their website, it looks more contrasty than it is but I think it's nice. I'm still getting used to it though because I'm just so used to the last design in terms of looks. It is a little bit thinner. The weight's not so different from the previous generation. Not that anybody was really asking for these to get so much thinner. With gaming laptops, that's always a challenge. But Ryzen helps with the challenge of thermals versus thinness and all that, which we'll get into. Some of the ports have changed too. The Alienware graphics amplifier port is gone, which totally makes sense because they have discontinued the Alienware graphics amplifier on this. There's no micro SD card slot. There's no mini display port, but there is a USB-C port that does support display port out. So you've still got it. You just need a little dongle adapter or a USB-C to the display port cable, whichever it is. So that's good. We still have the HDMI, the three USB-A, and we do have that just that one USB-C port and no Thunderbolt three or four here because AMD, not Intel, it's Intel's intellectual property. You know that story by now, probably. Another exciting thing, and that we've seen this this year with Ryzen laptops and RTX 3000 series GPUs, is that these are paired with QHD display options now still 16 by 9 conventional aspect ratio, unlike the 16 by 10 aspect ratio we'll see on the Lenovo Legion Ryzen editions. But anyway, it's nice to have that. And that one on Dell's website says it supports both G-Sync and advanced optimus, which means you can switch between dedicated graphics only mode and switchable graphics mode. We have the base model display, however, and that one is a full HD 165 hertz IPS display that doesn't have G-Sync or optimus, so it's on switchable graphics all the time. You can't just run on DGPU mode. I'll talk a little bit more about how you get around that later. And lastly, there's also a full HD 360 hertz refresh display, one millisecond response time uh, that does have G-Sync and does have advanced Optimus or dedicated GPU only mode if you want. And by the way, that QHD display is 240 hertz in a supposed one millisecond response time. So you got all that? So, so this new legend design, the latest generation that we have now, is also going to be used for the Alienware M. 15 R6, which is the Intel 11th gen version that was just announced today, May 11th, 2021. So anything that's a plus or minus here also applies to Intel. So for those of you who feel paranoid, like Dell might be giving Ryzen a short stick, not so much, except for in one way that I'll talk about. So Dell sent us the Ryzen 7 5800H with the RTX 3060, a little bit of a lower end configuration. And we have the base full HD 165 Hertz display. Uh, I wish it was the QHD display so I could tell you about that and maybe even the 5900HX, but either way, you're getting a really good CPU here. The one thing to note that, again, Intel is going to have the same chassis, the same cooling solution as this Ryzen model has, which means no more vapor chamber, copper pipes, all that sort of thing, same port selection, but there is no RTX 3080 option here. And that's kind of a shame. And that's the only place where I would say it feels like Ryzen got the short end of the stick and I don't know why. Whether you go with the Ryzen or with the Intel 11th generation CPU, that's the R6, the, the GPU wattage has gone down from the previous generation R4 a bit, which is going to be a disappointment for some who play AAA titles and want the maximum graphics performance. It's 125 watts maximum for the GPU. So that includes 10 watts of dynamic boost. So it's 115 plus another 10. And that's the way, again, this chassis rolls. And also this chassis is only available in dark side of the moon, no lunar light. There will be the Alienware X17 that they've only just teased so far, which I think is going to be their slightly larger, well, obviously 
17 versus 15, but even if there's a 15 inch of it, I think it's going to be a bit bigger. It's going to have a quad fan solution and basically liquid metal encased in silicone. So that's going to be where the higher watt GPUs go and the overclockable i9 if you're looking at Intel land. So now you get the idea about what's going on here. But back to the M5 and the Ryzen version of this laptop. So reasons to love it include obviously the Ryzen CPU. We have the 5800H and the 5900HX. Both of those beat the pants off of Intel 10th generation 45 watt CPUs. So you're getting a lot of performance with less heat. So no more having to play with throttle stop and undervolting and all that kind of thing just because you're thermal throttling all the time. That's pretty nice. Also, the architectural changes here, maybe getting rid of the Alienware graphics amplifier freed up some room, maybe the fact that they're not using a vapor chamber cooler here, but a traditional copper heat pipe kind of design means there's room for two RAM slots. So, you know, I've been complaining, shall we say, G-rated words here about Alienware not giving us RAM slots for a couple of generations now. And, and gaming laptop people are enthusiasts. They want to know they can upgrade later. It's not so much that RAM fails, you just want to be able to upgrade and add more. So two RAM slots, DDR4, 3200 megahertz, which is what Ryzen rolls with, so that's good stuff. The Wi-Fi card is socketed, so you could upgrade that too in case some, you wanted Wi-Fi 6E or whatever. So that stuff is good. And are definitely pros for this. As long as you're not looking for the absolute max performance, like those of you who spend the higher dollar amounts on higher end Alienware machines. Also, there is no 17 inch. This is just the 15 inch. They didn't announce the 17 inch. I don't know if we'll ever see one. Now we'll take a look at the internals later, but one thing, just because you get your RAM slots back in your socketed Wi-Fi card does not mean that we don't have an inverted motherboard insofar as you're going to have to take the motherboard out if you want to replace the CPU and the GPU. That still hasn't changed. We'll take what we can get. So how is performance and how is cooling on this? Again, we have the RTX 3060, so don't expect us to be pushing insane frame rates in AAA titles, but still, performance on this is quite good. And in terms of temperatures, as Ryzen machines go, this kind of reminds me of when Dell started shipping the G-Series gaming laptops with Ryzen in last gen, and they ran hotter than average. Uh, this, these, this runs a bit hotter. Typically in games, we're running around, AAA titles that is, we're running around 90 degrees centigrade for the CPU. And for Ryzen, sometimes, you know, like on the Asus Rogue Strix Scar that I reviewed and some others, granted that does cost a bit more, we saw temperatures more like 80, sometimes upper 70s to 85. So this is running a little bit harder. This does not have liquid metal for the thermal paste and again, no vapor chamber. So that is what it is. But still, there's no thermal throttling with this and 90 might not be my target when playing Cyberpunk on ultra settings with ray tracing enabled, but it's not bad. It's better than the Intel offerings from Alienware in the 15 inch size. In terms of the fan noise, it sounds like an Alienware M15 machine, which means it, if you're playing games on balanced or the high performance fan modes, you'll hear plenty of fan noise and it's a smaller chassis, so a little bit higher pitch. So it, this is a headphones machine if you're playing games on. It's not as quiet as the Asus Rogue Strix Scar. Again, that one does cost more money and well, it does have liquid metal for the CPU cooling, but it's also about fan tuning and other things too. So not a quiet one, but it, it's not louder than the Intel version from Alienware either. In terms of performance in games, to talk about that a little bit more, if you're playing like something like an esports title like CSGO and you're putting it on medium or low settings, you can push those crazy frame rates in the 200s if you want, even with the 3060. Obviously, a 3070 is going to buy you even more. And in Cyberpunk 2077, I mean, you can see the footage running. It might not always be above 60 frames per second with ray tracing ultra for your settings, but it's pretty playable and the frame times are really good, which means it stays smooth even if you're running at 45 or 48 frames per second. Obviously, if you turn off ray tracing, you'll get a big jump. And we use DLSS enabled for Cyberpunk. So it's a pretty solid performer, honestly. If you're looking at even the $1,569 or $68 version of this US dollar price, you're going to get AAA title performance on this. So not too bad. 
The keyboard on this is pretty much identical to the Alienware M15 R4. You have your options of the zone backlit keyboard, which is what we have. And the only thing I don't like about that one is the fact that the multimedia keys and the punctuation keys up on the number row are not backlit. But anyway, it's bright. You've got the usual Tron lighting, which is the butt light up oval on the back of the machine. You've got the alien head light up. If you want to be a little more chill, then you can disable that stuff too. If you go for the per key right now, there's only the Cherry MX Ultra 1.8 millimeter travel mechanical keyboard, not mechanical, super loud, clicky, massive travel like on a desktop keyboard, but uh, that nice clicky kind of feel. And it gets you a little bit more key travel than the 1.7 millimeters that you get with the four zone traditional keyboard. It's your choice. Both are available to you. While the keyboards might not be much different from the M4 options, the trackpad feels a little cheaper. It's harder to press. Usually Alienware's have a pretty light touch for the trackpad. It's harder to press and the click sounds a bit more hollow. Well, you listen for yourself. You can hear the difference and obviously you have to test one in person to feel the difference. We have 2.5 gigabit ethernet on board, which is pretty darn nice. HDMI is 2.1, which means it supports 4K at 120 hertz for those of you who have your fancy pants OLED TVs that do that thing, yeah? And for those of you who are worried about on this base model that we have with no MUX switch, no switching to DGPU mode only, which can be a hit of five to 10 frames in some games, especially at 1080p resolution, have no fear. The, both the HDMI port and the USB-C port with display port support out are connected to the NVIDIA RTX GPU. So you can get your max frames going that way. The laptop ships with this big honking adapter. So 240 watt that Alienware has been offering forever with their laptop. So it's not the lightest thing and it has a pretty big footprint. It's not very thick though, you know, but uh, <laughs> that's an extra carry. With the M15 R6, Dell has said they're gonna introduce a more compact 240 watt adapter. Why they didn't do it now, I don't know. Will it be backward compatible with this one? Probably. But the good news is with an 86 watt hour battery and Ryzen inside, if you're in switchable graphics mode, so you can use the AMD Radeon Vega iGPU when you're not doing any heavy lifting with this, battery life is pretty good. Six and a half to eight hours if you're running it in silent mode and you drop that brightness down even further than we did. We run it at 200 nits and we do office productivity software, a little streaming of Netflix or Amazon Prime, that sort of thing, a little Photoshop editing. And I was getting about six and a half hours at 200 nits of display brightness. So for a performing gaming laptop, that's not so bad. And like I said, you could stretch that with just using a little bit more power savings. Getting inside is easy. No really annoying plastic clips making it difficult. Some of the screws are captive, this and this. Those two are longer screws, but those are captive. So you probably won't make the mistake of putting them back in the wrong place. Just unscrew them all and then lift up. And as you can see, it tucks under here, just like Alienwares have always done. And here's our bottom cover, which is a combination of magnesium and aluminum painted. Yes, this is a metal laptop. I know because of the paint they put on it. Sometimes people think it's plastic. It's not. So here are our internals, our 86 watt hour battery right here, our two speakers. These are pretty small looking and you know, they're two watt drivers and the, the sound is just okay, not great. You know, not much bass, volume is reasonable on it. You definitely want to wear headphones for a more enjoyable experience there. Underneath here is our socketed killer 1650 AX Wi-Fi card, which is actually Intel hardware inside. So that's absolutely fine. Our M.2 boot SSD is right here. Boy, that is a super shorty drive, isn't it? So there's room for a full 2280 height, obviously right here. And there's a second slot symmetrically right over here located. And I would, uh, it's pretty obvious you're gonna need some kind of bracket that Alienware makes so that you could actually, well, anchor it down tightly. You can be creative and figure out something for yourself, I suppose. And our RAM slots with the little dim, marking right here. Here are our two RAM slots. So you can get it with 16 or 32 gigs of DDR4, 3200 megahertz RAM from Dell. And the theoretical maximum for this should be 64 gigs if you source yourself some 32 gig modules. 
under here and really not too much else to see. This is the back side of the heat sink. Again, if you want to repaste it, you're still going to have to pull out this motherboard to get to the copper heat pipe. We have a nice little graphic that Alienware Dell provided so you can see what the heat pipes look like. It's three heat pipe design, two of them shared, two independent. So there it is, the Alienware M15 R5, the first Ryzen that we've seen in forever in an Alienware. And I'm so glad that they did this. And obviously there's a new chassis design that we have here as well. So I leave it up to you how you feel about that. The drawbacks would be that the GPU wattage has gone down for this. And if you're going with the Ryzen, you can only go up to a 3070, not a 3080. So if you want the truest, most high-end GPU that's available in this chassis, you're still going to have to look at Intel. The upside on this, the thermals are pretty good. They're not the best we've seen versus say the Asus Rogue Strix or even the Legion 5 Pro, but they're certainly better than generally what we've seen from Intel up to the 10th generation. When I review the 11th generation, we'll know more, but that's promising. I'm happy to see the QHD display option on board as well, because that's a good choice when you're looking at the CPU and GPU performance that are available here, and you do get sharper visuals. You know, I can see the difference, and I'm not even a 20-something with the super sharpest eyes. It just looks really nice, the QHD options on these Ryzen laptops. We have USB-C, and we have HDMI here 2.1, which is also sweet to see. And for those of you who do opt for the lower-end display that we have, you know that you can still get DGPU mode for your games using either of those ports. So all in all, it's a nice step forward for Alienware just to have Ryzen, and they've done a pretty decent job here. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you like this vid.